This is Robert with DC Trolling Motor and today we're going to cut in the battery switch. I have two different battery banks and one is the lithium bank and the other one is the AGM bank that's hardwired into the rest of the system and I don't want them to be all wired together at the same time and I also want to eliminate any possible chance. So that's why I'm switching from my other battery switch which was a Perco 2 bank which is a perfectly great switch but it's also has a combiner mode and I don't want a combiner mode on this switch just so it can't accidentally be switched on. This blue C switch is a 300 amp switch and it is set for uh, banks one or two but not combined. So we're going to go ahead and get started on that project. I've started the project by removing the positive cable from the battery terminal. If you feel comfortable, you could remove both of them or just the negative. I like to remove the positive and then I take a little piece of duct tape and tape the thing down somewhere. But it's uh, completely by disconnecting the power, we're completely disconnected at this point. I'm going to go ahead and close the case where the battery is as we won't need to access that. <clears throat> Just for convenience, I'm going to move this seat out of my way. We're going to be putting the switch right here. This bottom piece is if you want to use it as a standoff like that. And there's an opening on the bottom for it and you could rotate that around or you can bust out any other openings. I would recommend that if I were using this that I would probably bust out one of these side ones and or both of these two side ones and go one cable in here, one cable in here, and one cable in there. As you can see that's why. But we're gonna go just like this straight through the side. Now, I wasn't able to get the exact size of hole saw but if I would have waited for a couple of weeks, I could have special ordered that and had it sent here. We live out in the country, and so sometimes some of the parts are not exactly available when we want them. Let's go ahead and zoom in and get a little bit closer look on the project. So I'm not going to show you the whole process, but I am going to show you the beginning and the end of drilling the hole. So I've selected a location right here that will be out of the way, and... When this is in here, it'll only stick out that far, so it won't interfere with anything or anybody. There is a little bit of foam back behind here that will have to be removed, but my plan is, is to partially drill into it, making it easier to figure out what needs to be removed. We don't want the wires directly in the foam. If they run across the top of it, that's fine, but burying the wires in the foam will actually increase heat on the wires, and that's never good. Okay, now we've completed that cut and uh, I'll tell you, that was a mess. Another thing is, is we're going to have to watch out for this bottom rail. It's a little bit uh, wider than what I was expecting. I'm just going to use a screwdriver to remove some of this foam. So we're going to go ahead and set this up in there and see how it's going to fit. Like I said, the hole was a little bit larger than the device, so there will be a little bit of a gap around it. But it doesn't look too bad. Now that was a big mess. We definitely have the shop vac sitting right over to the side there, and I'll be vacuuming this all out when the project's done. Now we have two options because of this bottom rail here. We can put it in like this and bend the connector tabs, or we can go upside down, and that would provide that some room that we wouldn't have to bend any of the tabs. I kind of like that idea of going upside down, and that'll allow me a better view of uh, the installation. So I measured the location, and I went ahead and I cut the wires, so that way we can insert the clamps. So I have a hydraulic crimper right here, and these wires included a set of terminals. 
I guess they're ring terminals. Just trying to score the outside. Once I've scored the outside, then I should be able to pull it apart. You don't want to overcut because then you'll cut the strands of the wire and you'll ruin the integrity of it. By doing that, you'll lower the wire gauge and we don't want to do that. And get that in there completely. Turn the hydraulic on. Once it's firm in there, I'm gonna hold the wire as tight as I can. And when it's completely crimped, it will stop. Then you just turn it off and it opens up. And there you go. Just like that, and then we'll heat shrink it when we're done with the other one. I'm just going to go ahead and heat shrink that now. And turn that on. It's on medium. To get it right where I want it, and then just give it a little bit on each side. So we've got all the ring terminals attached to the ends of the wires and heat shrinked. And uh, this one is the back bank. And this is going to be the most difficult one because I wanted to curve it. So that way I could put it right next to the rail there. So I'm going to set that on there just a little bit and tilt it back. And then I'm going to put the nut on. The nut has a little bit of a shroud there. It's like, a, I call it a built-in washer, I guess. The nuts come with the switch, but there is no lock washers or anything like that. But they do have the grip on them. And this is a 9 16th wrench. It's a little hard to get in here. I'm sure that a socket would work on a regular one. So I'm going to play with this and get these three wires attached here. See this one on there. And then this one is marked output, which goes to the trolling motor. And this one goes to our number one lithium bank. So we'll be right back. Okay, so we've got all these wires attached and we made sure that we gave them a good test to make sure they're all tight. Good. Then we're going to slide them in here, just like that. That's kind of our test fit. 
This wire is a touch on the tight side, but we can release a little bit of that from inside. And so now I just have to fit the screws. Pull that out for a second. So I like to put one screw in, take a little look. Like I said, the hole's a little large, so there's gonna be a little bit of gaps around the edges. And then once I put the one screw in, then what I can do is I can get a better idea And that'll give me a perfect lineup on all my holes. So after you make sure that your holes are clean and they're all lined up where you want them, then go ahead and insert all your screws. Oops, the battery died. Well, I hope you got all of that, but now the switch is installed. These are number 12 size sheet metal screws and they're made of stainless steel. Stainless steel screws are not the strongest screws. However, they are corrosion resistant and a size 12 is a large enough size that it's really beefy. So you can hold really strong things like pole holders and stuff. I would not use size 12 if I would have had size um, say 10 in my toolbox but I didn't, so I just went with these. And um, I will try to put a small chart for the correct size drill bit to use. I always kind of improvise. I just use, I usually keep like three or four of them in my set, and then I drill the holes and I ream them out if I need to. So the next part of the project is gonna be the negatives. And with three wires, you could really use a single terminal negative. So you would only need to have one nut, one bolt, and you could just attach it anywhere. But I want to organize it a little bit better than that. So what I would like to do is have one side for the trolling motor and the other side for both battery negatives. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install it clear up here. The reason I'm going to install it up here is I want it out of the way so nobody can catch anything on it, but I want to have access to it so I can see it clearly. So I'll go ahead and do that, just the same steps as before. I'm gonna take all of the negative wires, I'm gonna put uh, ring terminals on, I'm gonna heat shrink them, and then I'm going to attach them right here, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. So if you saw anything you like in the video, like this uh, battery switch, the link is in the description below. Also, you'll find the link for the other battery switch that I had, which is absolutely a great switch. It just is not compatible with two different types of batteries. So if you use those links, I will get compensated and I appreciate it. There's links to some articles on these things on my website. Have a great day and thanks for watching.